Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to try something just a little bit different. We're going to do just a few roses that are actually climbing, which should be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're enjoying this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with some green on the three-quarter brush, and let's go over to some yellow. That'll be nice. I've also got some clear gel, which I have not put up on the canvas, which I'll just throw in the brush right now. Okay, so we need a little explanation. You see, I just went ahead and taped off this little, I think this is a trellis. I'm pretty sure that's the right word for that. If it's not, I'm sorry. But <laughs> anyway, so I taped that off and kind of got that ready. And then we'll just paint over it like it's not really there. Now this tape isn't as sticky as it should be. So I'm gonna be a little bit careful. There. In this area I didn't tape off, but we know that that's gonna be white. Now normally, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of doing a lot of the the work, you know, with the with the masking tape. You know, I'll throw a seascape horizon line, but that's about it. But today I, I thought, you know, this is a lot of straight lines, and I thought about maybe just drawing them out with a pencil, but I just think this will take less time. I think it'll probably get the same effect, and I think this will take way less time. And, you know, <laughs> if it's gonna have the same effect, it only took me about three minutes to put the masking tape on it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this way today, I think. There, I'm just painting what will feel like a bit of a rose bush in the background. There, I don't really care how much paint goes on back here because this is about all this is gonna be, just indication of light, indication of leaves. There, beautiful. Now I've changed to a one inch brush just because I wanted to fill in these little squares faster. So each, each little area is gonna get some color and I want it to be fairly dark but here's the catch, and I even see while I'm just looking at this uh, that I need to work on it a little more, is it's like, it has to be one flowing painting. So you see we have a light and then it just like jumps to dark. So that doesn't work. I've got to put a dark right here and bring that dark up. So that if you see a dark start, you have to follow it. Same with the light. I mean, obviously you don't have to do that every time, but as much as possible, I'm gonna do that. Just to make it, you know, flow. Because a lot of times when you paint stuff like this, and this works you know, for buildings and, and every other thing like that, you know, oftentimes it, it looks like you painted around whatever it was you were doing. So try not to, try not to do that. It's okay to use blue. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna put a lot of blue in this painting today. Now this is kind of an underpainting here. Over here, not so much. It's kind of just the way it is. Over here, it's more of an underpainting because I want to bring the eye into this area. Now I will take whatever, maybe enhance this a little, kind of bring that over. But otherwise, I'm gonna throw some larger leaves over a lot of this. There. Now we're gonna go ahead and wipe off each little area. Careful not to pull up the tape. <laughs> this may be the most important step we do today. I'm gonna to leave this area kind of alone because I don't really want, actually I do want a rose right about there, so maybe well, I don't want to. <laughs> Got to be careful. I'll do that later. I'll just make sure I get a little bit of paint wiped away. But this way we don't have a bunch of mud up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop on a few leaves up here. Not too many, just a few, and mostly in the, in the darker areas on the left. You see, I'm just using a soft color, kind of a soft blue-green. There we go. And just getting a lot of these little leaves. Now, of course, I put some red just to indicate the background roses, and then I just did some circles to indicate our three major roses. The reason, the reason I did that right now is simply so that I don't paint them, paint over them, right? Because that would be kind of counterproductive. Nobody wants a muddy rose, and you know how brown and how green work together. I'm sorry, red and green gave it away. Makes brown. There you go. So anyway, we don't want that on our canvas especially not in the roses. It's okay to have brown other places, but not in the flower. Unless you're going for a dry flower look, which I'm not <laughs> there. So anyway, you get the idea. I'm gonna just keep throwing some of these in, not too many, not too many at all. And I did some stems, which I think will look good once everything comes together. There. And again, I just had to be very careful to connect each segment. The stems were very easy to just forget about and <laughs> go to the next area. Make sure you connect them. There. 
Oh yeah, this is gonna be pretty. I can already, I can already see it happening up here. Put a couple of larger leaves out over some of that kind of, I don't know, impressionistic light. You see that lighting up there? It's really pretty. A couple of dark ones are good. Now, you wanna make sure that when you stroke your leaves, you get a nice leaf shape. I kind of do these random strokes and then lift off. That gives you an, at least a taper to the edge of the leaf. Maybe it's not a perfect leaf shape, but it's not bad. Well, now it's finally time to pull off the tape. There we go. Yeah, because there sure is a lot of it. I'm going to be a little bit careful to not drag the tape across you know, the, the white areas. There we go. You see how this worked out pretty well? There, nice straight lines. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of this. It really didn't take me that long, but it does look like a lot of tape. There. Now I've mixed together here just a very, very light off-white color with a little bit of clear gel in it. Not a whole lot, but just a little. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in over our little trellis here. There, and that, that looks good. Okay, you probably can't see it, but you see this is acrylic gesso base, right? Because that's what comes on the canvas and this is oil paint. So I want the whole thing to be oil paint. So it requires painting over it. And also, you know, a couple of little spots that happened where it leaked over. This is a good way to just melt it together. Also, you know, the rule about not having, that's well, not really a rule, it's more of a suggestion about not having any pure white areas in your painting. This is an off-white. If it doesn't show up perfectly in the camera, in, in real life when you do this, you'll be able to tell it's not a true white. It just helps to, to give a little color to this area. Now I'm gonna carefully place in these little drop shadows, just not, not too big, just enough to kinda show some form. Obviously something like this can't cast a very big shadow unless the light was doing something really interesting, which it's not, it's kinda normal light, so there. You can always come back with your white and kind of straighten it out if you maybe got too much on there. Good. Don't get carried away with this. Just sort of do a little bit at a time. Step back, look at it, and then add more if you need it. Now, as you can see, I went ahead and just filled in the rows where we already had them. We could still kind of see the outline, so I just filled that in. And now I'm going to place in our dark. This is the beautiful dark center of the rose. Oh yeah, love this sort of thing. All the contrast in here is just amazing. Now, you do wanna be careful not to put on too much paint because if you get a lot of paint down in here, things go bad. <laughs> so let's keep things as, you know, put on a sparing amount of paint as possible. Keep things kind of a little bit, a little bit on the thinner side. There, not thin like runny, you know what I mean? Not much paint. <laughs> there we go. Right over here, let's do the same. Maybe a little less on this one. I just think maybe it doesn't need as much. There, beautiful. Now I'm just gonna take a couple of these leaves and bring them right over. There, what that'll do is push that little, little trellis back into the you know, into the painting a little. I'm being careful because it's easy to add them. <laughs> Not so easy to take them away. So there you go. That looks good. Uh, let's see. Now we got to think about how these, about how these little guys are going to be connected. I'm a little dark there. I, I saw the white coming through and it just wasn't working. So a little dark there. Let's see. They're kind of connected maybe with a stem. Maybe that stem kind of runs back here. I just want to see it. There we go. Okay, let's do this one up here. This will be more exciting. <laughs> let's do, let's do the stem that comes over and around like that. That's cool. And then you can do that with a few of these, you know, have a stem that just comes over in a leaf or two. That's awfully, awfully scratchy there. I don't have a lot of paint. It's fairly sticky in that area. That's why that is. So you just sort of Keep playing with it till it works right. Good. All right, I'm gonna continue with the leaves, throw a little highlight on the leaves, not much, and play around with this some more. Then we'll, 
we'll get to our flowers pretty soon. Next, I'll load up a nice, well, kind of a mid-tone here on our three-quarter brush. And okay, we gotta, we gotta start picking out some of these petals, trying to make them at least look a little more 3D. So let's just start right here. There we go, okay. <laughs> Nice. So roses are interesting. The shapes are, well, they're very interesting. They've got all sorts of different angles and stuff to the petals, lots of petals. And you simply have to paint them all in as best you can. If everything's not perfect, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference, but you do have to get it close. There, I'm gonna slice in a few petals like this. Good. Maybe there's one. This just takes an extra minute. This is not something you should be rushing. <laughs> there we go. There. There, not like a tree. A tree can kind of go however. Roses are a little more specific. There, that's pretty though, isn't it? So the light's coming across like this. I may have gotten carried away with that one, but I'll leave it for now. And there you go. Just start throwing the color right on a little bit right there. This is kind of just mid-tone, like I said. Not super concerned with the mid-tones. There. And then maybe right there. That one's, I have to kind of just figure out that that one's in, in front. Good. Okay, we can always pop the darks back in. We very well may need to, so don't feel like you're locked in. Now I'm just going to go ahead and work on some of the, the highlights to these roses doing it with the detail round. So here's my thought. You can do it with the three quarter, but I think you get just a little more variation. Well, actually, I know you do. You get a little more variation in color when you do it with the little detail brush. So you can kind of come in here, you get little different streaks of color, which is nice. I mean, I think that's cool. I like it. So anyways, I'm, let me show you my palette. I've got all sorts of random things happening here, but here's an orange color, and I've also got kind of a pink color, and I'm using them interchangeably to add some variety. I'm kind of looking around, thinking about where we want to, there's a petal right there. Kind of trying to figure out where each petal needs to go. There. Now, obviously, you're probably noticing that it's leaving a bit of a hard line everywhere I go. Kind of brush strokey, you know? That's okay, we'll take care of that with the blender brush. There, you can see I've been working on that one up there, just to kind of make sure that I had all the colors working and it was looking right there. So you can kind of do a couple of just the edges of one of petals and then you can kind of separate them with shadow. You don't have to have everything perfect right from the start. There. Good. So you, you very, very well may want to come back and add in some extra little bonus shadows, which I actually did up there. Super easy to do. There. Kind of, kind of curl in. A little petal like that, you can flip your canvas upside down if that makes it easier. I know some people do, I've heard of that, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not gonna worry about it that much if this is a little, little different because I painted it upside down. Oh well, <laughs> there you go. That's sort of my thought about it. But obviously you do it. Whatever, you know, makes it, makes it the most successful for you. I obviously don't wanna tell you not to do something that might be useful. So if you need to, flip your canvas upside down. There. Okay, cool. I'm gonna see him coming in with my darks again. Punch those darks. Boy, things just look so much better when you get a little dark on them, don't they? They just stand out and the contrast is so nice. Mmm. Separate these petals with a little dark. You really shape your roses more with the dark than with the highlight, which is true for so many things. Watch this, just cut in, <laughs> just cut right in. And then you get extra little petals. And then obviously you have to refine this as you go. It's a little rough, they usually start a little rough and you refine it, you add little bits at a time until you're satisfied, then you stop and you stop quick because <laughs> otherwise you, you can overdo. So you really do need to, to, the minute you're happy, you need to stop step back and take a good look at your painting every once in a while before making any super big choices. There. Oh, this is fun. 
something totally different. We haven't done anything like this in a while or ever really, I guess, but there, I guess the roses is over the fence painting. That was pretty similar to this. Nice. Now to blend, blender brush, and just really softly hit it a couple times to knock back some of the harsher edges. You can even throw a couple of the petals kind of out of focus in the back. Yeah, maybe this one out of focus too. Now I'm gonna just drop on a little bit of highlight to these leaves. I'm starting with kind of a mid-tone. I'll work my way up, but just a little bit here. There. See that? That's good. And now we're not done with those roses at all. I still want to do just some more of the same stuff to them, but I want to take a break from rose painting for a minute and just show you these leaves. So you just kind of drop a little highlight on one side and kind of the side that the light would hit, or depending on way, the way it's facing, maybe on both sides, just sort of depends on how the leaf is working. There. Good. All right. We're going to vary the greens. This is, like I said, just starting with a lighter, kind of a mid-tone green. There. That's starting to bring a little more depth to this whole area. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.